I think it's time that we compare the Nintendo Switch with Valve's Steam Deck. And the main reason why I even wanted to make this video is because every time that I talk about the Nintendo Switch or some iteration of the Nintendo Switch, the Lite, OLED, whatever, Valve Steam Deck is part of that conversation as well. And don't get me wrong, it makes sense. You have two comparable handhelds, one that is from one prominent company and another one from another prominent company, kind of essentially duking it out for a perceived same space, same audience, but I'll talk about that later on. In this comparison video, what I want to do is I want to compare these models, not from the hardcore gamer that we all are, but more from the casual perspective. Somebody that doesn't know anything about modding consoles or doesn't want to mod consoles, or somebody that doesn't want to worry about finding ROMs and BIOSes and installing individual emulators or a package deal like the Emu Deck. Don't get me wrong, I will be talking about that later on in the video, but in the essence of the video, I want to talk about this from a non modding, non-emulating perspective. I've been gaming on the Nintendo Switch since day one, and I've had the opportunity to play tons of games on there and sink hundreds, if not thousands of hours onto the handheld slash console. With the Steam Deck, it's a little bit different. I've only had it for a couple of months, and I've had an opportunity to go ahead and do a review video on that, but I do want to work on an updated review because there's some things that have kind of come up within use of that. So subscribe, that way you can go ahead and stay up to date with that. When comparing the different screens between the Nintendo Switch and Valve, Valve's Steam Deck, it's hard not to ignore the fact that the Nintendo Switch platform has multiple screens available depending on your budget, as well as what you want in your gaming experience. If you want the top dog, go with the Nintendo Switch OLED. If you want something that is in the middle and still has the Switch factor, then go with the regular Switch. If you don't care about any of that, then go with the Switch Lite. Valve, on the other hand, although it does have a 1280 by 800 screen, it doesn't provide that much flexibility. The only real technical difference between all of the models is that the high-end model offers a anti-glare option, which personally, I don't really see myself using it that much, but for people that are out there that want that higher and experience, well, you can pay for it and you can have that. When comparing the screens between Valve's Steam Deck and the Nintendo Switch, the difference in resolution really wasn't that much. I mean, yes, the Nintendo Switch has a 1280 by 720p screen and the Steam Deck has a 1280 by 800. The extra little bit of pixels that are on screen doesn't really make that much of a difference. The resolution really is practically more or less the same from a casual perspective. I'm not sitting here counting pixels. I'm just sitting here playing the game and seeing the difference in pretty much my gaming experience. It's just not that vast of a difference to even say that there is one. So when it comes to resolution, they are pretty much neck and neck. At the end of the day, do you want an OLED or do you want to go ahead and have an LCD screen? That's the biggest difference between the two when it comes specifically to the screens themselves. When it comes to battery life, it is very easy to see the stark difference between these two platforms. Obviously with the Nintendo Switch, you have different models. You have the Switch Lite, the regular Nintendo Switch, as well as the Switch OLED. But all three of those systems, they all kind of hover around that three to seven hour margin. Obviously, if a game is much more taxing, you might even get less battery than that. In some instances, you might get a battery that is performing worse in comparison to what their averages are. With the Steam Deck though, you have three models that are technically available to be ordered, but the battery is more or less the same in all three of them. And there's such a stark difference in terms of what you can experience while you're gaming on the Steam Deck. Some games, honestly, if they're 3D and they're taxing, I might get maybe an hour, hour and a half of battery life in handheld mode. But if I'm playing some Something that's like, I don't know, Vampire Survivors, which is amazing, you should play that. I'm looking at more five to seven hours because it's a 2D pixel game that doesn't require that much rendering and that much processing while you're gaming. Valve has already publicly stated that the next Steam Deck iteration that is going to come out is going to be focused specifically on improving battery life as well as the screen. So we will see whether or not they can go ahead and do that. But no matter how, which way you look at it, the battery life is just simply better on the Nintendo Switch models that are out there in comparison to the Steam Deck. If you have ever held a Joy-Con and gamed on it for a long period of time, you know exactly how uncomfortable it is the game on the Nintendo Switch. Don't get me wrong, I love the fact that you can take out the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con and replace it with the Hori Split Pad Pro, but at the end of the day, when you're getting it out of the box and you're gaming on that for a long extensive period of time, it is going to hurt. It is extremely uncomfortable. It is pretty much a slab of plastic that you play with that has buttons on it. And yes, technically there is a D-pad that is there, but it's practically non-existent. There are four buttons unless you actually get a Nintendo Switch Lite. With the Valve Steam Deck though, 
it feels amazing the grip that is there is pretty much meant for adults like i have man hands and it feels absolutely awesome to game on the valve steam deck the buttons are perfectly laid out there is an actual d-pad i mean guys it feels great it's a little bit heavier than the nintendo switch but at the end of the day it just feels like it is great to game on for long extended periods of time when it comes to modding and emulation on both of these platforms there is a lot to talk about and i do not want to get super deep into it in fact i kind of just want to touch a little bit on it because frankly if i wanted to i could make an entire video talking about the different aspects of emulation on both of these platforms whenever the steam deck is part of the conversation emulation isn't too far off and i get it i understand technically the emulation on the steam deck is phenomenal in comparison to any of the other handhelds that have been released as of late and don't get me wrong with the nintendo switch you could technically mod it you can go ahead and run different emulators on there and you can emulate different games Games. The main difference between the Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck when it comes to emulation is that with the Steam Deck, you just have fresher hardware, much more powerful hardware, which allows for different games that are less optimized to pretty much run better straight through brute force. We saw that online with what happened recently with Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. They were released on the Nintendo Switch and that kind of showed more or less one, that it is under optimized software, as well as yes, this is technically a weaker chipset. I mean, the chipset that originally shipped with the Nintendo Switch was designed and released for the wild in 2015. The stuff that is on the Steam Deck is state of the art. I mean, the guys, this was released this year in 2022. So it makes things much easier to run on a Steam Deck in comparison to something that came out in 2015. Add to the fact that the Steam Deck has a native built-in desktop mode that allows for so much more flexibility and so much functionality that honestly it just beats everything that the switch does straight out of the water when looking at these platforms and their respective libraries it becomes very easy to tell which one is actually the winner i mean guys steam has been around forever they have an extensive library that is readily available for you to play on the steam deck itself and don't get me wrong you are going to run into some form of compatibility issues with older titles that have been released for like ever but when it comes to titles that are released in today's day and age almost all of them have some form of controller support if not full controller support so technically you don't really have anything to worry about when it comes to the nintendo switch on the other hand the, that's where you kind of start to see a little bit more of the blemishes in terms of what is actually available on the platform yes there are a lot of titles that came out on the wii u that have been ported onto the nintendo switch but aside from that you can't really go too far back unless you have a nintendo switch online subscription so you're not going to play nintendo you're not going to play super nintendo you're not going to play n64 you're not going to play sega genesis and frankly who knows what else is going to be released with the expansion pack honestly it's a little disappointing that the virtual console isn't available on the nintendo switch i would have rather preferred to have that so that i can go ahead and pick and choose which games i can go ahead and purchase or at least have the option to do that so if i wanted to go with the nso or if i wanted to go with the virtual console i had the option to pick either or so it is what it is at the end of the day but clearly the Steam Deck has a much larger library of games that are readily available for you to play on the go. Once everything's said and done though, which platform is for who? Whenever I look at the Nintendo Switch, I see that as more of the casual platform. There's plenty of family-friendly titles that are available on the Nintendo Switch. There's also hardcore games that are out there for the gamers that are like us, that want to go ahead and play the latest and greatest. But at the end of the day, anybody that is familiar with the Nintendo brand can go to a Nintendo Switch and have something that they can experience that is fun. Yes, there are some instances with save data transfers from one console to the other. You might find some hiccups, for example, with Animal Crossing New Horizons, the whole save data transfer thing is a complete and total mess. And in some instances, some games, even modern titles, don't support save data in the cloud. So there are a couple of caveats, but when it comes down to it, Nintendo knows what they're doing and they know their exact demographic, and it is much more family friendly than let's say for instance the steam deck the steam deck has a lot available to it and yes there are some family friendly titles that are available on the steam deck but i still think that the steam deck is more geared towards a mature audience i see this as somebody that is you know a teenager that wants to go ahead and get into pc gaming and they see this as an opportunity or a way of getting into pc gaming without spending thousands of dollars on a top of the line rig if you already have a steam library getting this is a great addition i've been able to experience some of the titles that 
that I've been meaning to play on PC on the go and handheld and it's honestly great. It's phenomenal how much handheld technology has progressed since the original Nintendo Switch came out or even further than that. The 3DS and the 2DS Game Boy Advance, all that stuff. It's nuts that we have gotten to this point when it comes to technology and honestly it's really exciting for what could potentially come in the future. Overall though when it comes to the Steam Deck if you aren't afraid of running into some form of technical issues where you have to change from one Proton to a Proton Experimental or if you aren't afraid of dealing with some form of compatibility mishaps that might happen while you're gaming with the older titles then I say go for it that might be the better way for you to experience some of the titles that are coming out in today's day and age. I want to talk about the two different audiences that both of these platforms are targeting because the Steam Deck has been heralded as the quote unquote switch killer which can't be anything further from the truth. Yes, Nintendo is targeting the casual gamers, but they're also trying to retain or gain back that hardcore audience that they lost during the Wii and the Wii U generation. The Steam Deck, on the other hand, is targeting a specific demographic and audience. They're targeting PC gamers. I mean, think about it, guys. The only way that you can get a Steam Deck is by having a Steam client and having a Steam account. That'll go ahead and give you access to actually buying a Steam Deck. But when it comes to the general masses, they don't know about the Steam Deck. Yes, if you are a gamer and you are aware of what's happening in the industry, you know about the existence of a Steam Deck and you may actually want a Steam Deck. But at the end of the day, if you are a casual person and you're going to Best Buy or Target or wherever to buy a console or a handheld for a friend or family member, you might not know that the Steam Deck even exists. It isn't going to be a competitive platform until Valve takes the Steam Deck and puts it in a brick and mortar store right next to the Nintendo Switch so that when somebody goes to actually buy a Nintendo Switch, they'll see this and they'll be like, wait, what is this? I want to know more about this. That's when you're actually going to have an opportunity to say, yes, these are going head to head and we're going to see what happens with the free market and what the audience is going to go ahead and decide on what platform to go and game on. Until then, there is literally barely any competition at all whatsoever. Yes, you might have some people that are interested in one over the other because they're hyper aware of what's happening in the industry, but overall, it just doesn't matter. They're targeting two completely different audiences altogether. Both of these handheld slash consoles have their own pros and cons to them, but at the end of the day, it really depends on how you want to go out and game and the experiences that you want to take with you on the go. If you want to hear my initial review of the Steam Deck, then click this video right down here. And if you want to hear my review of the Nintendo Switch OLED one year later, then click this video right over here. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and I will see you on the next one. Until next time, guys. Peace.